I am just recording from now. Okay, so very welcome everybody. It is one minute past. I'm afraid to let it go any longer than that. Um, and I'd like to introduce the first of three presenters or groups of presenters. Um, Fiona, you look like you are ready to go there. So I'm going to give you the off. Everybody will be strictly kept to 20 minutes and it's up to yourself whether you want to go 15 and five or 10 and 10. So over to you. Great, thanks a million, Lisa, and good afternoon, everyone. You're very welcome. My name's Neve Watkins, and I'm joined today by my colleagues, Dr. Tara Kincana Gibney, who's module coordinator for this module, and Dr. Fiona O'Riordan from the Teaching Enhancement Unit. So today we'll give an overview on how we have used interactive oral assessment online and how it is supported by Moodle. So the interactive oral was the assessment that we had used in a professional master's of education primary and within a module on literacy. Um, and essentially in this literacy module, uh, students were required to demonstrate their understanding of uh, early literacy skills, discuss classroom pedagogy in relation to teaching those skills, and outline the research and the policy in relation to this. So essentially they were required to do three things, uh, essentially the what, the how, and the why of teaching early literacy skills through an authentic conversation, um, which may happen in a professional um, environment. So I'll pass you over to Fiona, who will give, I suppose, an overview of the interactive oral. Okay, uh, thank you very much for that, Neve. So in general, it's a, a two-way natural conversation or exchange. So um, I think actually I should have put your slide up first. Apologies, Neve. You, you, you carried it off very well, I have to say. Um, yeah, it's a two-way natural conversation or exchange. The whole point about it is that, it, it, as Neve said, it has to be authentic. Um, and to be authentic, it has to relate to their future employment or professional skills. Um, and by being authentic, it allows the assessors to explore the student's deep and critical understanding of material. And from our perspective, I suppose the guiding force initially was to promote academic integrity. But we have found that it's, uh, it's produced many more benefits than that. As I said, it prepares students professionally for employment. And it is important that it's part of a scaffolded assessment uh, design. And um, so usually it kind of has another piece or two underpinning. Not always, and even Tara will tell you about their experience in a moment. In terms of our experience in DCU, uh, we have been collaborating with Griffith University Business School in Australia. Um, our colleague, Danny Logan, a learning and teaching design consultant there has been very generous with her expertise and time. And we meet weekly on a Wednesday morning for an hour and 15, 20 minutes at about 8.15. And there are about six to eight of us. It, it, it shrinks and expands depending on the time of the semester. Um, and there are colleagues across DCU from Tara and me from the Institute of Education. We have other colleagues from our language school, computer science, engineering, and our business school. Uh, so we've lots of examples um, and we have a national, so I'm gonna um, shamelessly promote us here. We have a national forum seminar on the uh, 24th of March. So we will share all four examples of that. Today, the focus is on Tara and Neve and their use of technology. So we've developed a suite of resources as part of this community of practice and we're collating student feedback at the minute. So I'm going to pass back to Tara to talk about how it actually worked in practice. Okay, so um, as, as Neve mentioned, um, the, the focus of our particular module and the assessment in it was to kind of simulate a kind of a, a real world uh, event where they are acting as classroom teachers. So this was just a little blurb that was given to the students as, as part of a full descriptor um, of the uh, assessment. Um, so just on the next slide there, uh, just gives you a little uh, screen grab there from our Moodle or our loop page um, and the different uh, bits and pieces that we had put onto the page. Uh, to support the students uh, in this assessment. Um, so we obviously had details of the assignment. We also paired up the students. Um, we had a, a list of the resources they would choose. Um, we had a scheduler 
um, so that they could book themselves in for slots, which we'll talk about a bit more in a minute. Uh, we had specific guidelines in terms of how the oral would proceed and different things to do before, during and after uh, the assessment. Uh, we had a Word document of the grading rubric, and then we also had the grading rubric um, available for us to be able to, to actually use uh, in real time um, with the students in the assessment and to share it with them afterwards. Um, so the Moodle scheduler was um, a new tool that we had never, well, I had never used before, before uh, we decided to use this mode of assessment. Um, it's a very handy tool within Moodle in which you can put in your slots in which, you know, when you're going to have your assessment. So we had it on over a Monday and a Tuesday and each slot was 20, uh, well, it was a 20 minute slot, but there's 15 minutes scheduled to allow us five minutes between slots. Um, so Moodle has the capability to kind of decide when you want the slots, how long you want them to be, what sort of gaps you want to have between them. You can add slots, you can delete slots, you can do lots of different things with the slots. Um, one thing that we realized, though, that when I was actually putting, setting it up, that if you don't hide this um, in Moodle, the students can go in and start adding themselves before you've actually finished the document. Um, so. I didn't realize this was possible um, and I had students who had already signed themselves up for slots um, during my lunch break because you have to go in manually and remove slots for your own breaks and for lunches and things like that. Um, so as a result, I actually had to go in and revoke those students. So you can see there's a little uh, thumbs down um, icon there under action. Um, and I had to take those students out so that we could kind of all start at the same time in terms of equity for the students. Um, so sent them a notification via email so that they knew that the slots were now open rather than people getting in a little ahead of time and that kind of thing. Um, so uh, it's a very useful tool um, and it just allows the students then to decide when they're free. Um, and we had 33 pairs of students. So it's quite a lot of students uh, if you were trying to do that in another way. Um, then as part of our uh, marking, um, we had, uh, we used a marking guide. Uh, we did consider using a rubric, but actually the marking guide worked better for our assessment because it was just more, allowed for more description, which is kind of how we were planning to grade it. Um, so within Moodle, we went in um, through advanced grading, selected our form from scratch, and then started to to populate our marking guide as you can see there um, so a tip i would say about using the market guide is that when it says that button there at the bottom save marking guide and make it ready make sure you don't press that button until you're really sure it's ready because once you do as far as i know i couldn't find a way to go back um, so i kept saving it as as draft until very close to the assessment um, so that um, i could kind of just keep checking it and making sure that it was really uh, perfect for it. Because once, you, um, once you've once you saved it fully, you can't go in and change it. You'd have to start all again from scratch. Um, that's my understanding of it anyway. I couldn't see any other way around it. So that's um, a good tip for um, the marking guide. Um, so this marking guide, as I said, we put on loop, we get the students a Word document as well so that they would have the same information available in another format. Um, because this wouldn't have been viewable to the students uh, until the assessment actually rolled around and until they um, were part of the assessment. Um, there may be another functionality within Loop to do this, but uh, we couldn't uh, identify it at the time. Um, so then um, the students view then off the, the marking guide when you go into grade, it looks like this. Um, I think if I was doing it again, I might try and reduce uh, the amount of text. There is a little bit of uh, replication of the text because of how I inputted it uh, to make it a little less wordy. Um, but that's how this the, you would view it when you're, you're grading. Um, um, actually, just before we go on, um, another thing I suppose we realized is because this is kind of a, a different sort of assessment, it's an oral assessment, um, we uh, we realized that actually the students had to make it, the way we had set it up, they had to make a written submission in order to unlock the rubric, essentially. Uh, now, since then, I've realized that there is actually a button in there in when you're creating the marking guide that you can, there is a place where you can press a button to allow that to be unlocked or usable without the submission. 
Um, but unfortunately, I did not find that button on time. So it meant that we had to ask the students to simply submit a piece of paper or a Word document with their name and student number on it. And that way, that allowed us then to use the, the rubric and allowed them to see um, how they got on in the rubric and things like that. Um, but just to be mindful of that, if you're, if you're using it for this sort of assessment, um, that uh, you need to either have ticked the button when you're setting it up, or you need to have the students make um, some sort of submission. So maybe a declaration uh, uh, or something like that. Um, so that's our marking guide. Um, and then uh, Neve is just going to chat a little bit about um, the actual oral and how we use Zoom in conjunction with Moodle. Thanks, Tara. Yeah, so in preparation for the assessment, uh, myself, Tara and Fiona, we created a, a, an example um, of the interactive oral assessment just to give students an indication of the style of questioning that, that would be used and also to give them an opportunity to use the marking um, the, the, the marking guide as well. So it was a, a role play in which Tara was the examiner, myself and Fiona were in role as student teachers. Um, and then we shared that video with the students and then they had the opportunity in the second last week of the semester to watch the video and then to use the marking guide um, in, in which to give, I suppose, a kind of a, an indication as to where they, they think that we would fit um, on, on, on the rubric. Um, so um, with, with, with the interactive oral, we had used Zoom. Um, again, the students were timetabled in pairs um, and placed in waiting rooms. Um, and that function was available on Zoom in which the students were placed in, in these waiting rooms. Um, ahead of their um, assessment. Um, really important that the interactive oral was recorded and it was recorded for moderation purposes. Um, and just a reminder that we had recorded the students in the interactive oral and then made sure that we had stopped um, the recording when moderating the, the students' grades. Um, the, these recordings, they weren't released to the students again, because they were conducted in pairs, um, but the students were given feedback um, through, through the rubric. Um, and then just in terms of uh, sharing the videos for consultation purposes, just in line with, with, with GDPR, it, really important that when sharing it, that students would only be able to see their own work. Um, so, that, which is why we had shared uh, the, the marking grid um, with, with the students and not the actual video then as well. That's two minutes left, Neve. Um, yeah, I think that's I think that's pretty much it on the um, sharing videos. Um, sorry, Taryn Fiona, do you want to jump in there? Yeah, no, I just I suppose we'd invite any um, questions or comments anyone might have just about uh, the process and 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 using. Moodle in, in terms of uh, conducting and supporting uh, the interactive 